Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. And in today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating how the sacred calendar works using the celestial clock calendar. Now, this clock calendar was built on biblical principles like what we see in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14. But let me quickly try to help you understand how a wall clock can be used like a sacred calendar. In other words, let's talk about the math behind it all. Now, the clocks that we're used to, they have a second hand, which measures minutes, and a minute hand, which measures hours. It has an hour hand, which one revolution will measure one half a day. Well, if you continue this pattern and put that half a day back into the system, one revolution of that new day hand, or moon hand as we like to call it, will be equivalent to 30 days. In other words, while the minute hand normally ticks off 60 minutes to count an hour, well, if we're counting 12 hours instead of each minute, one revolution will be equivalent to 30 days. Now, if that don't make sense, just wait around till we get to the clock demonstration. We have a visual aid, praise our Father in heaven, that's gonna help us to understand all of this. But continuing on with our calculation, it should be pretty easy to understand how if the new moon hand is giving us 30 day revolutions, then 12 of those revolutions will equal to 360 days or a year. Or does it? Let's look a little bit closer at this. We understand that the minutes and hours of the clock are designed around the moon, but Let's see how all of that works. Now, each lunation or from one new moon to the next is about 29.5 days on average. This means that 12 months or a lunar year would be 354 days. Notice how close this is to the geometric circle, which is actually 360 days. Just think of 360 degrees makes a full circle. That's the geometric circle. but the lunar year, like we said, is only 354 days, which is six days faster than the geometric circle. In other words, the lunar year is faster than the solar year, obviously. And this is why holy days tend to fall 10 days earlier each year. Like, for instance, if you look at the Jewish Passover schedule, you see that it falls about 10 days earlier each year. For instance, one year is April the 30th. And then the next year is April the 20th. Well, that's similar to the Muslim holy day schedule. Looking here at Ramadan, we see that it does the same thing. One year Ramadan will be on April the 2nd. And then the following year, it will be on March the 23rd, 10 days earlier. And that pattern continues. The reason why that is, is because the moon's lunation is 0.5 days faster than what we would see on a normal 360 degree geometric circle. And to account for this discrepancy, we learn in the scripture from Moses and from Enoch that there are additional days that have to be added to the celestial calendar. We learn in the book of Jubilees, chapter 6, and 1 Enoch, chapter 74, that there are four additional days that are to be added each season. And we're going to use the celestial clock calendar to demonstrate how these four seasonal days ends up completing the geometric circle. All right, so let's get to it. Now, I have to apologize for the poor lighting conditions, but I believe we can see how this works using what we have. The first thing we'll demonstrate is when the beginning of the year is on the celestial clock calendar. I have to rotate it all the way around to get to the one position, which would be the first new moon after the spring equinox. And that is important to understand when it comes to the celestial clock calendar or the sacred calendar for that matter is that its seasons always begin at a certain time of the year. Like we said, the first month begins with the new moon after the spring equinox. 
But then, according to Enoch, we count 91 days, which takes us approximately to the summer solstice, when the next season will begin. But anyway, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So, looking here at the celestial clock calendar, looking at month one, with the star hand pointing to the one, which will occur when the sun enters the month Aries, or the ram. And the moon hand is pointing to the beginning of the first day position or the new moon position. That will be the first day of the first month, which in the year 2022 fell on April the 2nd. But anyway, the moon hand will rotate around the clock calendar throughout its lunation and we'll see another new moon. At about the 29 and a half day mark, like we talked about before. So at exactly 29.5 days, our celestial clock calendar will look like this. But because the new moon is always sighted in the evening time, we wouldn't recognize that half a day. And it would appear as though the new moon fell exactly at the beginning of the first day of the next month, IR or when the sun enters Taurus or the bull. But then as the moon hand transverses again, counting off the 29 and a half day lunations, the next time the new moon appears, the celestial clock calendar will look like this, where it's pointing to the 29 day mark, already showing that the celestial clock is falling behind a half a day for the first month, and a half a day for the second month. Now, that's as expected because of the half a day difference that we've been talking about. So, we'll continue on around until we get to the fourth month on the sacred calendar. And this time, at the 29 and a half day mark, the celestial calendar will look like this. But because we're on the new season, we have to add the seasonal day. And we do so by manually pushing the moon hand forward to the new moon position once it's sighted in the sky. And this occurs four times in a year. All right, so notice that I switched clocks on you. The one I'm using for demonstration purposes only is merely a standard clock with the celestial clock face on it. But I'm bringing out a genuine celestial clock calendar so you can see how it is that that day and a half is actually added. So we're looking here at the beginning of the fourth month and the evening time when the new moon is sighted. So now it's time to calibrate our clock once we have verified that we have a new moon and we start moving the hand forward. Now Notice that it is a little bit slow, but it's a lot better than the previous versions of the clock calendar where we had to actually disassemble the clock because it had Gregorian dates on it. If you have one of the older clock faces with the Gregorian dates on it, you're going to want to get it refurbished. Either you can send it back to us and we will refurbish it for you, or you can order the replacement face, the updated faceplate from coachingthefight.shop and simply go in and replace the faceplate with this version here or a later version. Anyone that has the Gregorian dates on it will have to be replaced in order to work properly else you're going to be having to disassemble your clock ever so often. So now you see we've actually added a day to the clock. We have to go around three complete times of the hour hand in order to add a day. That was only two times, so that was 24 hours. So we have to go around again. And as you see, the clock is approaching the new moon position. But keep in mind, we only have to do this every three months. And this could actually be really important if and when we come to the time when we can't actually see the sun or get the chance to see the moon or anything that can keep us from going outside. So 
That's the way it'll look. We'll come around three times, lining it back up to the current time, and we see that the moon hand is now pointing back to the first day of the fourth month, and we're ready to step ahead as normal. So we're looking here in the fourth month, the first day of the fourth month. As the clock is ticking off time throughout the lunation, when we come to the fifth month, Again, you will see by calculation, the 29th and a half day will be here, but the new moon won't be spotted until the evening time, which will be right there between the two numbers. That should be noted that right there between the two numbers is the beginning of the day. Like for instance, right there will be the beginning of day two and right in the middle will be a half a day so that will be in the 6 a.m. that's important to understand when it comes to setting the clock but anyway as the moon transverses around for its lunation coming around to the sixth month the clock calendar will once again appear to be a day behind somewhere about right there and it's only when we get back around to the seventh month which is one of the days of remembrance, like we saw in the scripture, the new moon will be spotted about there, which is in about a day and a half off. Remember, there's three months with 0.5 days in each month, making it a day and a half behind. And we add the seasonal day at the beginning of the seventh month by pushing the moon hand forward to the new moon position once the new moon is sighted. Now, if we don't get to verify the new moon for ourselves, and we have to rely on others, say, the next morning, we simply push the hand to the half a day mark, which will be about right there. But either way, the clock will continue to tick now that it's been recalibrated for the season. And one feature that we can mention on the celestial clock calendar that we don't see written in the stars themselves are the feast days and how on each of the months we see the feast days listed like for instance how here in the seventh month while the moon hand is pointing to day 15 we have a reminder that we're right there at the feast of tabernacles and then about on the 22nd we see that we're about at the great eighth day of tabernacles but anyway the clock continues to move around as it does the ninth month of course will appear to be a day behind but we won't recalibrate the celestial clock calendar until we're coming around to the day of remembrance of the 10th month when we will be a day and a half behind and we will push the clock forward so notice that we're pushing the clock not a day but a day and a half that day and a half actually adds six days to the celestial clock so once we get back around to the 12th month and the clock appears to be a day behind is only when we come back around to the beginning of the first month and we're a day and a half behind will we add that day to the clock bringing us to the first day of the first month now the other thing that I need to mention about how the celestial clock calendar works and it's probably the most important thing because all we've been doing so far is just pushing the clock ahead adding a day every three months well there's some years that have 13 months in it like in the year 2023 when we'll have a 13th month so let me show you how that works when we begin the year, of course, we'll begin when the moon and the sun are in Aries or the ram and we'll start the season. And when we get to the fourth month, everything will be falling out perfectly. We'll just add our extra day as we do normally. But in 2023, what we'll notice is that we'll have three new moons that will fall in the summer season. We'll have one new moon in the sixth gate, one new moon in the fifth gate, but then we'll have two new moons in the fourth gate. And what we understand from the book of Enoch 
it's only the first new moon in that gate that actually counts. So when we see another new moon to fall in that particular gate, falling before the autumn equinox, no doubt, we'll know that the fall has not actually started. And so we'll start the sixth month all over again, waiting until there is a new moon after the autumn equinox or after that 182nd day from the spring equinox to start the seventh month. So there is your 13th month. Sometimes it falls in the summer, sometimes it falls in the fall, and sometimes it falls in the winter time. So that's why the scripture never talks about a 13th month, because that leaves the wrong impression that there's actually an Adar 2. Well, if there's an Adar 2, then there's an Elul 2, like we'll see in the year 2023. And there's also a Kislu 2. And we could possibly see a Siwin 2. It all depends on if the new moon falls before the 91st, the 182nd, the 273rd, or the 364th day of the year. In other words, if we're coming around to the 10th month and we see a new moon, we'll have to see if we have passed the 273rd day of the tropical year. If not, we'll have to count the ninth month all over again. And that's how the celestial clock calendar works. Now, if all of this seems a little complicated, then understand that's exactly why you need a celestial clock calendar. This has been the most educational tool as far as learning how our father's sacred calendar works. That's why I call it an educational aid, even though it can function as a wall calendar. So if you haven't done so already, go over to coachingthefight.shop and order your celestial clock calendar. They make great gifts and should be a part of any homeschool program. They come with a limited warranty which includes refurbishment. If you have one already, you may want to order the faceplate from coachingafight.shop directly or to take advantage of the warranty, just send me an email to endofight at yahoo.com. And after verifying that you have already purchased a clock, I'll send you out an updated faceplate for free. Or if you want us to refurbish it for you, we'll take care of everything for you and mail it back to you again at no extra charge if you need more information again send me an email to in the fight at yahoo.com or check us out at coachingthefight.shop and i'll see you over there